Hey, good evening, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. This is going to be week four of the GameStar HGC qualifiers for season three. So my name is Vandy. I'm going to be your host for the evening. And I've got Crisis, who's the producer behind the curtains. We've got Evixium, who's the community manager. Kitbox, who will be your play-by-play -play caster. And he's joined by two rotating casters tonight, who will be the analyst, and that will be Godlike Phoenix and Disconcur. So a uh, Welcome to all the teams who are going to be competing tonight as well. This is the final week, so unfortunately, I don't think we've had any new faces join us, but that's all good because there's also going to be a last chance uh, qualifier that we'll touch more upon at the end of the evening. But the format that we've got tonight, it'll be four rounds of Swiss, and these will be best of one matches. So the maps from the Tuesday Swiss, they are chosen from the official HTC map pool, and the top four teams from tonight will qualify for Thursday's Division One playoffs. Um, we also do have some awesome prizes to give away. So there will be loot chest bundles up for grabs tonight. So to get involved with this, we're going to be opening up a draw before the first game. And to get involved, all you have to do is type exclamation mark GS Hots into chat for your chance to win. So without further ado, I'm going to pass you over to Kit Fox, who will start getting you... Uh, I hyped up for game number one, and it's going to be Milkshake versus CityWalk, played on Sky Temple. Thank you very much, Vandy. Hype is the name of the game. Well, actually, the name of the game is Heroes of the Storm, but hype is what I'm all about, and I'm going to be bringing that to you here. And alongside me is the man who you know as Dad in the scene. It's a very good evening for this game number one on Sky Temple to Disconcur. Hey, Kit Fox, what's going on? We Here we are, week, week four going into sky temple what a great map i the start the series off it's uh commonly sort of referred to as a uh, love hate map here in the anz region uh, a lot of teams would say they hate it but you know what they even though we don't choose it in this format a, a lot of the time teams end up choosing it for one reason or another <laughs> It's one of those ones that's been around for a very, very long, uh, long time, and like I said, sort of fallen off the bandwagon in terms of, you know, draft choice when you get the option. It's often one of the first ones, you know, uh, taken out uh, alongside, you know, the obvious Braxis holdout, Warhead yep. Junction. But here we are on the Sky Temple. Now it is Milkshake on blue. City Walk will be on red. And we're just going to get this coin toss underway. But this concur. No drafts as yet. No bans. Just by pure names. Who do you think is going to take this one out? Oh, by pure names. Gee, ask me the uh, sun, sun of the sky here. Um, I'm I'm probably going to go with Milkshake because, you know, I'm a bit of a veteran in the scene myself, not so much from playing but from casting. And just some of the names on Milkshake, they're just – they're veteran players. You know that this is this is old school, this hat to them. So let's let's take it for the old grumps. We'll go uh, Milkshakes. The old Grump. Shout out – speaking of Grump, shout out to Grumpshot, who's done all the work behind the scenes. He's got a lot of teams together and – He's actually, uh, you know, done a lot over the last season or so in terms of uh, growing the scene, getting teams together. I think he put something like four or five teams together. So a little bit of an un unsung hero mm. story. Well done to Grump Shot. But it looks like here Malthiel is being hovered. Now, Malthiel is actually banned, so uh, not really needing uh, to, to, to ban him out here. Um, not sure if that's a little bit of a troll hover, but uh, they could just potentially waste a ban here, Disco. I think they are. Not, not an Uber app at the last second. I was about to say, Mal feels pretty good, but I wouldn't be uh, throwing throwing he's, him away on Sky, like, throwing it away on Sky Temple. He's actually competitively banned, so for the first yeah. two weeks after release, so they couldn't. Yeah, that's what I was worried about there. Now, Dehark at the other global pressure taking, uh, sorry, global pressure being taken off the board for the first time tonight. Yeah, and those are pretty good bands on either side. You know, pretty standard. Anubrak, Dehaka. You said the global pressure, and Anubrak is just. A really strong tank at the moment, yeah. so that does leave up, um, you know, leave the option for a first pick Genji. Um, you're probably in Uther or uh, Falstad as well. Obviously, on Sky Temple being a huge map, the uh, global positioning that can be provided from Falstad is huge, especially with the Harker off the board. That is actually an interesting first pick there, Johanna. Wow, that that is. That is really interesting. Like you're just giving the enemy team options mm. in Uther. They could go the Genji, the Zeratul here. Obviously, they still got false out on the table. Um, but that's like first. Whoa, that is like two super first picks. <laughs> Not I am. I am, I am shocked. <laughs> 
knocked off your stool, buddy. But now Utha being taken first. I remember back in season one, back when uh, Utha first got given his uh, armor, his 10 armor, I skimmy was making a meme out of the lad. And look at him now. Look at my boy Utha. He is back in pretty much, pretty much meta. I'm calling it for every single pick, almost every single draft, either ban or pick. Wouldn't you say, Disco? Oh, yeah, recent changes. He's just become mm. such more of a um, useful character in the game. Obviously, he provides armor to other um, to other players, other uh, members on your team, and that creates a really cool situation where he's anti-burst. And in a game where burst seems to be such the big playmaker, he's a real savior there. And look at that, Uther and Falstad. That's what I said. Those are I just can't believe those two mm -hmm. big massive picks like that. Chunky um, picks for the side of City Walk first up. Who do you think the second, uh, uh, the, the next two picks are going to be here for Milkshake? What, what would you counter with? Ah, oh, well, <laughs> they're, they're smashing. So they've got the Johanna and the Sonya solid front line. So they're going to be looking at something for poking here. I don't know. Maybe it's probably maybe the thing that maybe Grey Mane or they do the Zerical and Genji themselves right now. I would be more looking. Actually, you know, either one of those would probably go pretty well there. Um, they need to do something right now to pressure Uther in the back line. Even though the Seawalk haven't picked up their tanks yet, they're not going to leave their false and Uther so open like that. So I think they'd be trying to position into um, you know, into into another diver. Just well, Milkshake from being banned or picked out. Milkshake could potentially go for a mage here. Chromie leaming open, but yet you called it Grey Main. So lots of poke comes out from that uh, that lad, whether he goes attack speed build or cocktail. Ample amounts either way. In a beast, good. it's come back a bit lately. Well, it's even good wave clear in the lanes, obviously, when he goes werewolf form, and also picking up Merc camps as well. So combine that with Sonya, they've got this cool, um, sort of like, let's call it picking up multiple Merc camps now. Sonya working on something in the top, Greymane working on something down below. They've It's 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 a really nice looking composition. I just feel that they've, they've lost a lot, though, because they didn't do something about the falls there. Or they're trying to play against that in the team fights. It's like I said, it's a really interesting draft. It's very brazen getting the Johanna first, but Johanna is a pretty solid tank. And then you've got Sonya to complement that. But like you said, Falstad, there's really nobody that can sort of answer that global pressure that he's able to provide. I mean, he can go from um, one end of the map to the other like that. Unless unless Milkshake is going to pick up someone like um, Brightwing, so I was hovering in my mind. I was going like, look, you need to you need to really ban out the uh, supports here. That's definitely something that needs to um sort of weaken, remove Malfurion. Even though he received a little nerf last patch, he's still quite a considerable uh, support to take up in any maps. And Sky Temple, with how you fight around on the points, is really good. Yeah, entangling roots just by itself it, it really does have a lot of value i mean even with the recent nerfs to malfury and he does still sort of squeeze his way back into the meta ever so slightly now arthas is looking at being taken off the board here for the milkshake lads which makes sense because they've got both of their frontliners they don't need any more melee Sonya at all and if Sonya and Greymane dive in you don't want an arthas sitting there slowing down their attack speed. Yep. Not so bad for Sonya, because she still doesn't you know her most of her damage is coming from her slam. But she does have her auto attacks in between, so she would be losing out on that little additional um AA damage. Grey main it affects a little bit more. So reducing that and it also slows him down, right? He acts as a bit of like a super peel for the team. So going to the KT's pretty standard mage, he's really come back in favor, just doing so much damage now. It's like the scene it's like I don't know, it's like hot discovered that hey <laughs> we can be safe with the everyone learn how to be safe with kt and all of a sudden he made this huge re resurgence i think people being a little bit more defensive with their gravity lapses and not being uh, too aggro they've been watching the pro players from korea a lot of hgc a lot of esports in general coming uh, coming our way courtesy of the blizzard folks have been doing wonders but level taunt Keep your eyes on that one. Varian now being locked in for the City Walk lads. And yeah, they've got a, they've got a lot of tools that are able to protect that KT, to protect that Falstad. I like Uther, I like Varian, and, and basically anything you throw into that composition from here is just gravy, in my opinion. Yeah, I think like, the Varian pick's going to be really good to uh, protect Falstad and Uther, but I still feel they're going to need to pick up another warrior. Because I think the variant spread between the Uther, the Falstad, and the KT isn't going to be enough to really protect that. Especially when Sonya and Greyman can just dive over the top. And, ooh, uh, Lili and Karazim. 
Let's see, it's Potential they know they're going. They, you know, I, I can I can see the Karazim, right? They're going to go into a second tank, or the, in theory they have to. Um, I guess I'm looking probably it's going to mirror and um, I mean Diablo is still on the board. He might offer some plays when Sonya and Greymane dives in, but if they're just looking for someone solid to just act as <laughs> literally a wall, um, Meriden's going to be the best choice there. But Karazim kind of counters that, so they might have to rethink. Gee, do we pick up a tank here? Maybe maybe we look at a crazy Tassadar and use the <clears throat> shields, or maybe we take Zarya, who we can at least use the shields from Zarya to try and not so much counter the Karazim, but it's not just a meat shield. It's now a meat shield and an actual uh, physical embodiment shield. Mm. So it's a bit of a tough one. Lili! Potential specialist? No, Chen! Hey! Interrupt him. It, this is good. I mean, the keg, yeah, the keg is going to come in really handy when you've got a grey main wailing down you. I mean, you could even go Panda Pals um, if you so desire. But Chen is is someone we haven't seen for a very, very long time. And correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think we've seen Chen at all for this entire Season 3 qualifier. We definitely haven't seen Chen on the stream. <laughs> okay. Maybe yeah. he was there in a game somewhere. We haven't seen him on stream in any light. You know what? The Chen's interesting looking at this pick because... Chen's actually could be a really good choice against the Karazim. He, Karazim takes seven sides strike. You go with the Panda Bros, Panda Pals, whatever you want to call it, on Chen. <laughs> Earth, Storm, Fire, I think it's actually called. And it's three bodies now that Karazim seven sides strike is actually soaking into. So it's going to split up a lot of the damage. But obviously the barrel's got great interruption potential when you have someone like Greymane, or, like Greymane and Sonya dive in. That barrel, can, it's going to knock Lee Lee out of the way. It's going to knock Karazim out of the way. It's really going to push them out of the fight, split them up. And then a target like um, you know, Uther drops the stun. Uh, KT drops the gravity laps. Bada bing, bada boom. Kaboom! The bomb <laughs> yeah. goes off, you know. it's Let's get the uh, FBI in here. Bombs are exploding everywhere. So it's a... Uh, I don't know. But they've got the false stat as well. So, gee, interesting drafting on both sides. And I'm going to say, I think Chen was the right choice. Well, let's see. Let's see as we load into this game now, ladies and gentlemen. It is Milkshake versus City Walk here on Sky Temple. You're on GameStar TV for the Season 3 HGC qualifiers. Shout out to our sponsors, Blizzard ANZ, exclamation mark GS hots in the chat if you haven't done so already to get those bundles but over on milkshake on blue we have blank mkl malo arrow and nuke guardian and disco on city over on city walk we've got the, the rats are playing as uther we have snow as at who killed this we've got nikki webster playing as varian holy grail is chin and older lies will be playing three, as false dad one so, no, I don't think the Milkshake lads are opting for the standard level 1 engage here. If they meet in the mid lane, CityWalk definitely have the advantage. Sonya straight up the top lane, and then three lads down the bottom for Milkshake, so maybe a sneaky rotation, but Melo is the one in the mid lane at the moment, throwing out those mighty wins, just making sure that, uh, well, no damage is coming his way, because look at the bot lane, Disco, they've got three down there, they're going to take out a tower straight up. Yeah, this is a bit of an interesting one, because... They can be a pretty solid trade here by City Block. They can still get their tower, but the three lanes are being soaked in the favor of Milkshake. So it's kind of like a trade-off, and who's going to give in first? Mm. Now City Block, they've definitely given in first, going, you know, two towers is not worth three lanes of experience. So they haven't spread out then, but you know, it's a nice little opening play there. So Chen just yet to uh, find his way into the limelight in this game. Now Falstad utilizing that global does actually make his way down the bottom, that's Altees, but he's got three milkshake lads in his face, and I'll tell you what, he's bringing the boys to the yard in the mid lane, because Holy Grail, Snow, and I believe Ruthless was there as well, the rats, but he has to go back because he's out of mana. There's damage aplenty, Disco, on both the mid and the bot lane. Ooh, yeah, you know, I'm trying to think in my head who is one in this engagement here. I think we might see it a little bit in favor in milkshake. Let's think about the long game. When the second temple like on the bottom, they've got an advantage. There's less, there's no, there's no well in the bottom lane. So it's an interesting opening play. They're thinking long term, I like it. KT yet to get a stack on convention and we're, what's this, nearly two minutes into the game. So he'll be making sure that he can stack them up nice and fast. But New Guardian jumps in with the slam onto KT. But the gravity left is good. Holy Grail taking a lot of damage. In comes Blank with Karazim. 
And the thing I like about Karazim Disco is that for a support, he is able to dish out a lot of frontline damage. Yeah, he's, he's almost he, he's almost that pseudo support, right? He's actually a pretty decent support, but he's almost pseudo support in just how much damage he can actually um, chunk out. And he's not building really for damage. He's taking insight at level one, which is he's looking for the mana regains and stacks of insight, which again is just going to give him access to his abilities faster. So two temples up. First one is going over to. Uh, what's going over to Milkshake? They've taken the middle one. The top one now. City Walk. We're going to grab that one. So we are at an even Stevens here again. As Arrow finds himself in the face of Nikki Webster and Holy Grail in that top lane. Not a lot going on at the moment. This is going to be the stage where both of these teams look to take map control. And as I say that, Sonya peels off, takes a siege cannon. Oh, this is an interesting play. If Falstaff just has to return now. He's going, to, he's going to fly back down, but his flight's going to be off cooldown now with the Siege Giants. And look at Karazim and Johanna in the bottom lane. Falstad really can't do anything there. He's unlucky that he's got Uther and KT just above taking that Merc Cannon right now. Well, they'd lose that port. So, yeah, it looks like they're going to just give this one up. Altaze there is down there on the Falstad, but he's just going Pop that lightning rod blank, throwing out these strikes onto this tower. In comes Ratzler, in comes Snow, and they force them away. Their hammer of justice comes in. Blank, able to dash away, but he's going to go down. That's going to be first blood. Karazin falls in. Hey, I'll a lot of damage now on Johanna. Convection finds Ice. It is pop. Is there a hammer of justice in there? No, there's not. And they get the first blood. Well done. I, I'm almost going to say that's an acceptable trade. They are in a better situation level-wise right now, but that bottom lane has taken so much pressure that if if the blue side right now can really can just push that over, like if they get a boss, if something happens and they can somehow pick up a boss, that's straight to uh, tower tower territory inside the base. That is a huge, and that that force that's going up to be around much longer. They've got no safety net for the, for the second temple spawn that's coming up in the next 15 seconds. Oh, do need to try an apology disco because team names are actually on the wrong side and that is my fault. Milkshake are actually on red, City Walk are on blue. I do give my sincerest apologies for that, but as this temple spawns into the bottom lane, I'm going to fix that one up. We're going to fix that one up on stream. Sorry. And the bottom tower is now going to go in favour of, uh, of the City Walk lads on blue. Oh, looking. I'm not sure what Milkshake is doing right here now. They're kind of giving... They've just completely given up the bottom lane here. That's an interesting play. They weren't down on experience. They didn't really have a strong push going up in any of the lanes. I mean, Chen's in the top lane right now, but you know, he's not an amazing lane pusher. Even though he does have a lot of uh, damage. So that was an interesting play there. But uh, Nicky Webster has gone in, doing a lot of damage. They are going in in the bot. Blank takes a lot of damage, but he's able to dash away. Living Bomb isn't going to find the kill. No, he manages to make it to the fountain just in time. The temple has been pinched away. New Guardian trading with Holy Grail up in that top lane, but the bottom temple, meanwhile, has gone over to Milkshake. It's even Stevens in levels, and Varian charges in. He's one away from that all important level taunt. Yeah, level 10 is when we're going to see Milkshake boys now on Varian. That's when he has a bit of his power to fight. Level 10 grabs whatever he's taking, probably taunt, but whatever he's taking. <laughs> There's a reason. Cool. That's it, the reason behind it. The only, only, uh, only real tank on the team, right? But I'm not sure about their play just then because they just gave up that bottom line. They gave up a lot of experience just then to catch up. And it, like, they haven't even really secured level 10. But oh, yeah, it's going to go over to City Walk first. This guy, Arrow did jump on Nikki Webster, but just like that, it is 10 apiece on the scoreboard in terms of levels. Level 10, level taunt. There he goes. He puts a talent into it. And like an open book disco, Nikki Webster is ready to roll. Right, I'm really interested to see what the City Walking in this top lane, if they're going to pressure it and give up any sort of presence in the other lane. It is basically going to go down to a three lane soak now in the favor of Milkshake. But they're going to lose a lot of towers and structures behind this. Ah, uh, Milkshake going to respond. I, I want them to start pushing to the lane themselves right now. Give this up, get some pressure on their own, but... I don't know, I don't like the game they're playing right now. It seems very, uh... Very... I don't know, very... Passive or... 
And now we can see the... Now we can see yeah. the Imp Shake Leds taking up the siege camps of their own. In that bottom lane, now Taze taking a lot of damage from Melo with the battle. Lili actually dishing out tons of damage here, Disco. Yeah, look at her build. She has taken Gale Force at level 1, so she's doing more uh, blinding wind damage. So she's a little bit of a DPS with Lili here. Especially with uh, Water Dragon at level 10. So there is, uh, there is no support on the side of uh, City Walk, but they don't need it. They just, they've got so much map pressure. Well, they do have Karazim, who has actually put, uh, uh, he's put a talent into the Spirit Ally. So he'll be able to deal a little bit of healing, but like you said, there's no real solid dedicated support on the side of City Walk. But those blinds are what is going to be winning them the game. You don't need to heal your team if they're not taking damage. Yeah, well, then you know the old the uh, tradition of anyone that played Dungeons and Dragons. The uh, what sort of priest are you? I'm a face melt priest. <laughs> <laughs> so it's um, look good there. Look at that new guy in just in time. He is. Is he gonna get out? It's oh no! Move. The Gus goes in and he has the Pyroblast as well. Taunt! There's tons of ults just to take down New Guardian, but it's worth it because Sonya is one of the more difficult champs to take down. Sorry, heroes to take down. MKL just misses the condemn on Nikki Webster there, and he's probably thankful that he did because a close range variant is a dangerous variant. Look, I'm, I'm quite surprised that we didn't see Milkshake actually uh, sort of turn around on City Walk just then. So they did get the kill on Sonya. They didn't know that someone was in the, the bottom lane capturing the tower. They did kind of have the advantage. I know they were in a little bit of low health, but very like they just they actually had I think the tools to take that fight. Like, oh, Keg yeah, goes in from Chen. He's rocking and rolling. That is the call to engage. The taunt goes on to Melo. Get melted, Lee Lee MKL. There was nothing that he could do about that. Condemn misses everybody, and now they are without one of their half of a support. Did you see, well, we talked about it during the draft with the barrel, the barrel there. The fact that it can be used to segregate a member of the team and they can take it, they can get a kill. That is what we're going to see this every time. Um, well, they do have a slight advantage, the fact that there's the 5v4. So they're kind of forced to fight now out of City Walk. This is so it's dangerous. They're still going for the boss, not paying any attention to the City Walk lads who are just hiding in the bushes. The old Chinese bush strat down here on the Sky Temple. The milkshake, they're still confident that they can take this boss. The pyro blasts, are, sorry, not the pyro blasts, the flame strikes are going out. In comes Uther. It's going to be a battle for the boss. He's seven sided strike lands. Connects. There's tons of damage. Water Dragon goes in. Spin to win is the name of the game for City Walk. Luke Guardian was un unable to, to, to pop off as, uh, as efficiently as he wanted. Melo now is going to fall to Altaze. That was extremely risky there for Milkshake. Arrow's going to fall now as well. They get the reset. They've got nobody to defend this boss in the bot lane. Great play from Milkshake. They... Oh my god, so milk oh, so, rich, so much, so much happened just then. So milkshake, they took that boss and they, and they had small dad, he had mighty guts. They were like, ha ha, come and poke at us, city walk. When the boss is dead, we're just gonna gust you away. This is 100 what they did. Sonya, Nuke Guardian, almost scored themselves the MVP in my book. Almost. Because they waited off to the side, jumped, they left in. And that's what locked down all of our milkshake. Locked them down in place. But, and I, you know, I thought they almost had it, but where they failed is they all stacked up. They all then came back Guardians. and jumped on point. Who does milkshake have on their roster, Kit Fox? Who does milkshake have on their roster? <laughs> Katie. Katie. That, man, Katie. that is right. Okay. Yeah, and, well, <laughs> look, the, the seven sided strike combined with the water dragon. Nearly won them that, but you caught it. They gripped up, and there's another fighting game. You get another seven sided strike, another keg, another flame strike. Gust! It's almost like a repeat of the last fight. But, uh, talent for talent, skill for skill, but this time they decide to take down KT first. The smartest thing they've done all game, City Walk. They take down the number one damage dealer for Team Milkshake, and they're going to control this temple as well. Much smarter play from the left. Yeah, they really caught out KT there. Just found himself a. It's funny to say he found himself a little bit too far forward. He was with inside his team when that happened, but it was a really good pickup target. And that's what they've got to do every fight. Every fight, see what has to remove that KT from the uh, from the equation. It's like a game of chess, isn't it, Disco? Once you take that queen off the board, the most powerful piece that is able to do the most damage to you, it's almost like the other t the other pawns just fall over. There's just not enough damage. 
to be effective in that situation. KT, if they can play safe, if he can hold himself back, he's going to be their winner every time. But you know, look at poor KT. He's got zero stacks of convection right now. And it's not zero because he's completed the quest. It's, uh, it's, I'm pretty sure it's zero because he's got to start again. Unfortunate for that man. So he's not going to be able to be efficient as he would have liked. But Karazim gets taken out there trying to take down the camps of Citywalk. So... They're getting just a little bit complacent with the City Walk lads. Milkshake now, they've got the one-man advantage. Karazin getting way too low. He's actually got 30 seconds. This is where at level 16 now, Disco, the timers, they're getting chunky. You really don't want to be looking at them because now here come Milkshake in the bot lane. The timers are so long now. This is make or break. Dying here. And you can see Karazin's on in this fight. They almost can't go into this fight, City Rock, right now. No, look at him saying the back line there, right behind the uh, chin. So if something does go wrong, the uh, barrel, the cake can come out and save him. In goes MKL, he did blow the condemn as well as the iron skin. The gust comes out early from Altaise, used defensively this time as opposed to offensively. The cake didn't get as much value as they hoped for. Rats is being caught out here, fantastic condemn. And there's a good uh, coming out there from Varian, from Nicky Webster, just to take the attention away from his backline. MKL was forced to turn around there, but nonetheless, City Walk will be happy with that defense. They did that without Carolina, and they did not lose the cake. Key things, right, for all our youngins at home right now playing Heroes of the Storm. What just Ooh, transpired, Daddy Disco? They were fighting on a bridge. That is why you saw City Walk back off. When you fight on a bridge, you lose a lot of your mobility. Again, against a character like KT, that is huge. Big seven-sided strike comes in from the City Walk lads. Blank again on the Karazim. He's going to eat a Pyro Blast if he's not careful. It does go out. The Water Dragon goes in. And this is fantastic from City Walk. They find the targets they need. Altaze now has not so uh, Well, he's not been bit as effective as he's liked. That Hammerang does go out. And who was that that just got popped? That was Uther in his, uh, in his passive form. Now, KT throwing out those Flame Strikes, dealing a lot of damage. Sonya, though, jumps in with the slam, going balls deep. But a fantastic gust from Altaze. Just to push him away. MKL though, not done yet, but the rest of his team has peeled off. The City Walk lads, they've said, hey, 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 put the brakes on. We need to come back now. Just relax. Chill. Oh, that was almost disaster for him. That blessed mm. shield coming out of Johanna was a map connecting to, I believe it was KT and Varian. Um, would have been a huge play here, but... Oh, the, the ults just charged so fast. The Water Dragon comes in onto Chen, and luckily he was in keg form and was able to get away. Didn't get stunned from the Water Dragon, but the Temple going to go over to City Walk. It's 17 all disco. This game is going to go right down to the wire. Yeah, I, I can't tell you who's going to win here. Both sides are making great decisions, but one of them is always just one step ahead of the way. Um, Falstad holding onto that mighty gust, using it defensively in most cases, has really saved Milkshake uncountable times. But right now, looking at pure board pressure, it's definitely in the favor of City Walk. Nuke Guardian is going uh, extremely deep inside of City Walk, forces Blank to Radiant Dash over, and leaps in Nuke Guardian, not done yet. Close the size of Slam, going extremely hard on the front line, and Defensive Gust comes out from our face. The Flame Strikes form thrown out left, right, and center from Snow. The Pyroblast, it's going to connect. Nuke Guardian's going to go down here. Altaze, don't even bother, son. Boom goes Sonya. Fantastic play there from Milkshake. They've taken down one player. They didn't lose any. They now have the one-man advantage. Disco as Mil as they go up to the top lane, fantastic from Milkshake. This is really risky right now for Holy Grail. He saw the boss get up, they can't get picked up just then. And he knows his team is spread no! out. So. Oh, Chen gets taken down in keg form. So they've leveled it up now, and they may have actually handed this one over to City Walk because they have to defend their base. Varian's up in the top lane, he was taken out the temple, and I think they realized that City Walk are gonna take this milkshake, but they're gonna have to defend. Yeah, there is nothing Milkshake can do right now except defend that bottom lane. They've got Merc, they've got Catapult, and they're about to have a boss, and they're too late on this rotation. Um, they, they, they could die here. If anyone dies right now, the game is lost for them. Oh, Nikki Webb's taking a lot of damage, but Shield Wall is so strong, but a fantastic stun. Ratsa comes in and saves the day. Well played there. Combined oh. Uther and Shield Wall wins it for Milkshake, but that boss is still marching down on bot lane. It's not over yet. Yeah, they're going to pick up this Merc camp and they should rotate to the mid lane and take out the uh, keep there. Just really compound that pressure. They could fall off behind the boss, but the safer play is to get that keep in the mid. 
They're forced now to defend the boss on the core, like the core at this goes City Walk gonna take down this mid keep. Will they rotate up at the top? I don't think so, but MKL again on the front line, the rest of his team are gone. He is extremely eager. He's ready, he's keen. So let's go, boys. Let's do it. The core's right there. Who cares if there's five dudes in front of it? I can see the core, I can see it. <laughs> It's right there. Oh. Now Holy Grail is doing what MKL was doing and that's getting up in the front line without the aid of his team. Just needs to be careful. Takes a cheeky cocktail from uh, from Greymane there. Arrow is the man. Now Kate comes in and has caught Malo out here. Not a good oh. time at all. The torch does connect. Well done, City Walker without a player. Altaze needs to be careful but manages to barrel roll away. Another Pyroblast is coming out. It's going to connect on Blake. Shoot! Oh no! Oh, the seven-sided strike to the George. Pyro was fantastic! Radiant dashes away! And Toodaloo, he says, catch you later. Well done, Blake. Outplay. It's a nope, 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 fireball, nope, nope. <laughs> oh, this is, this is, man, I, like, if they got that Karazin killed, the, the game would have flipped and Milkshake could be winning right now. It's gonna go for a bit of a trade. Both teams are in a pretty similar spot right now. Well, the 20 minute game is a long game in here, so I'm just gonna, we're edging up to that now, and a lot of damage being traded. Kale Fast is the recipient, he bent over and copped it, he had no other choice. Milkshake now without their number one damage dealer, and just like that, the seesaw of a game has turned flip, rather, back in flavor of, a uh, flavor? Flavor? Of City Walk. Yum yum. Well, it's, we're talking about City Walk, so maybe it is turning back in their uh, flavor, right? Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> But love me a bit of Chinese. Oh, I I, I, just, I can't call it Kit Fox. I, I don't even know how to analyze this game anymore. It's it's literally <laughs> a game of who you know, clown who the fiesta. <laughs> clown fiesta is the correct definition. I believe we saw that in the Fnatic game, uh, the Fnatic series. They are too clever. <laughs> if both teams are too clever at the moment, and that is what is giving them problems. <laughs> Team. It's a, like the, the 10 section off of the barrel is going to be great. They've got to hold out 10 seconds right now in milkshakes. 10 seconds and they might be able to come back to this game. Oh, he jumps in. Well done, Chen. He manages to separate. Who's that? Is it Arrow? Yes, it is on Greymane. So that's going to be a lot of damage. He goes down, but Falstad has been melted up in the top lane while that was going on. Arrow has got the support from Malo. Finally goes down and now back over at the core as well. The action's going down. Nicky Webster charges into blank, but Torp was used. No, it's come back up. That's the magic of Barry. And He's got all some days. Holy Grey now chugging on that brew. He's gonna jump back in onto Malo. Gets the flame breath off. And just like that's why I love Chen. He's just able to stand there and take damage and just go, you what, mate? And MKL now is not able to do that, but a fantastic divine storm coming out from Ratza. Getting the stuns off, saves MKL's bacon. New Guardian's gonna pop Pyro Blast, but it's not gonna be enough to take him down. Why wouldn't have thought? Unstoppable goes in. Just a lot of damage, but too much. Not enough, not enough weak picks, Disco. Yeah, but they've got to chase. Oh, these boys have got to chase so hard right now. This is an opportunity for them to win. Normally, I'd say don't chase, but now's the time to chase. Get those kills. Stagnate the time, the death counters, and they go. Oh, they couldn't do it. Water Dragon goes in, and Lily putting a point into Double Dragon. We have hit level 20, so the power spikes are on. Convection has actually been completed from under us here, Disco. So that's well done from Snow to pull that one back after having a shock at start to the quest talent. So now we're at max power spikes. It's just going to come down to who is the smartest one? Roll safe. Oh, this is... I, they're going to get a tower each. Oh, they're going to get a tower each. And... Guardians, do not let these mortals approach. that's going in. He's the man. Alderlies, you've got to do some big play here. Oh, no. That's nah. not the big play I was thinking. No, oh, congratulations. Like Melted like wins. milk chocolate in a microwave. Well done there to the City Walk lads. They're going to take this top tower, uh, top temple. Now the Chen in keg. Are they going to throw here? They are. Not like this is the call. Well, they had to go in. They really didn't have much choice, the Disco, but they're going to take this top temple. It's going to do it. Oh my god, it's going to be a race. It's looking oh, so they are actually. Oh my goodness, oh, 20%. Oh my god. The Red Sand Snow, are they going to get it? They've done it. Oh my god, they Milk Shaker picked milk. it. From under everybody down in the oh, oh my god. god! Oh my god, Kip Fox, what was that? <laughs> what the <laughs> hell? What the <laughs> hell is going on? <laughs> I told you I don't I don't know what the hell's going on in this game anymore. This is now how oh. you play Sky Temple. 
You spend well. 20, 22, well, 21 minutes being extremely clever. <laughs> being extremely clever. And then just winning. What just transpired in front of us? Let's let's take a moment just to sit back and just soak it in. I mean, milkshake. They had they did have two advantage. It was twelve to nine at the end of the game, but it was just tit for tat in terms of levels the whole way. The way that teams were just going at each other. It was an absolute bloodbath on the Sky Temple to start things off at the uh, on the week four here of the GameStar HGC qualifiers. But Disco, we have to pick an MVP. This is going to be one of the Holy toughest Grail. ones. Holy Grail. No, on no, no. Holy Grail, mate. Yeah? Oh, my God. He <laughs> he chose the Chen. Like, so he is playing Chen, but he was the one that drafted Chen. He was like, we need Chen for this. And you know what? I saw it, understood what it could do, but Chen just won them the game just then by delaying the tower by a single shot. He gave his panda wow. life so Milkshakes <laughs> could score that victory. Oh, my God. I, the... the the drafting the Chen to get to Sky, the, the response to Lee Lee and Karazim, go Chen. Beautiful. Like, it, it really worked <laughs> for Milkshake. They did some, both teams did some, oh my, kid, oh, we could talk about this for days. Both teams <laughs> did some crazy <laughs> stuff in this game. Some insane stuff. Oh, and it was the Chen at the end of the day. Like, KT, you, you spent, like, no, no, I don't take this in a negative way. KT, you spent all game building your goddamn conviction stacks. And yeah. you're, still, you're still on the winning team. Why? Because that was Chen. Chen did that. <laughs> well, KT could argue that because he was actually the one down there uh, in the base, dishing out the damage, throwing down those conviction, oh. uh, sorry, throwing down those <laughs> uh, flame strikes, throwing down those living bombs onto that core. And in the end, can we say they deserved it? Can we say they deserved it? Uh, any team. I, th I think both teams deserved it, actually. It was just a matter of who was going to slip up first. But well done to Holy Grail. You got yourself a nomination into the GameStar MVP program. But that is only game one, ladies and gentlemen. So I'm going to pass you back over to your host, Vandy, and then we'll take a quick break. Thank you very much, Kit Fox and Discunker. That was an insane match, like nail-biting finish. I'm sure myself and everybody watching were un... Could not take the ending. It was unreal, Kit. It really was. So great match. Wonderful way to kickstart the evening. Um, and if you haven't already, we will be drawing the first loot box. Sorry, loot chest. Um, if you haven't already, just type an exclamation mark, GS Hots, into the chat. And uh, we're going to take a quick break to set up the next match and we'll be right back. <laughs> 